This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are talking about a 10,000-year odyssey. So tell me, muse, of that plant of many resources, which wandered far and wide. The ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber cultivated for millennia. As we venture through the past 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derives. The many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, hashish, cannabis in religion, Cannabis and medicine, and above it all, cannabis and Uncle Sam. So that's where our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. It is current and in progress. The growing debate of medical cannabis, federal power versus state rights. Ah, and who better to talk about the difference in federal power, state power, not with cannabis and lots of other things, of course, is our own Doug Chen, our attorney general and hero. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, that's quite an intro. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to states' rights. So for the last, what, 5,000 years, cannabis has been used as medicine. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to talk about the medical use of cannabis, the state's rights, and the feds. And so, where do we begin? The state passed a bill, an ordinance, a bill, or whatever. Bill. A bill. It's a law. Yes. It's a law. In 2000. Correct. And yet we're still stumbling with it. Right. Right. So, and now we have our darling, darling little elf that we call the Attorney General, the U.S. Attorney General, uh -huh. Jeff Sessions. So he has decided all of that has to go. So where are we? What do we do? How do we move from where we are to what is going on in the world? Okay. The states' rights. Let's talk about Great. states' rights. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you for the opportunity <laughs> to talk about this, and, and I, I think I can answer your questions. So, uh, and I think it'll be really interesting for your viewers to, to hear about this, because I, I think that's one of the things that people always try to figure out is, you know, how, how, do we, how do we reconcile the two different systems that we live in? So all of us live in the United States, so we're under federal law and federal jurisdictions, but then we're also uh, part of the state of Hawaii, uh, which has its own laws and its own um, its own policies as far as uh, what it wants to promote and how it wants to prioritize things. So uh, whenever you have a conflict like you have right now that we're going to talk about, uh, then I think that creates an interesting situation. Um, so like you said, uh, back in 2000, uh, Hawaii was one of the very first states, if not the first state, to, to pass um, a bill uh, that legalized medical marijuana. Uh, but one of the things that happened is when that bill was passed, um, there actually was no mechanism for how it would be delivered to uh, the people who actually needed it. Um, so that didn't occur until just a, a couple of years ago, 2015, 2016. It was <laughs> just occurred. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not keeping all my years straight. But two years ago, one, two years ago, okay. it, uh, um, they they just passed a, a law. Um, that allowed uh, for the creation of medical marijuana dispensaries. And so yes. that's where we're at right now, where we're in the state. Um, what's been legalized is not just medical marijuana, but I think what's even more important to people, what's made it more visible, is the fact that now we have um, eight licensed dispensaries, uh, of which a few of them have already opened up and are starting to uh, dispense medical marijuana to people who have a license uh, to use medical marijuana. So that's by, what we have in the state. By the license, you mean the card? Correct. The correct. card that you get from the state? That's correct, correct. Okay. So, um, so it, and this is something that, you know, a, a medical professional has, has uh, certified as, as you know, the person has uh, one of the uh, reasons for why somebody uh, needs to use medical marijuana um, that's in the statute. 
and then uh, and then they go to the Department of Health and get a, a license to use that. And if you do that, then you're able to go to one of these medical marijuana dispensaries, not just anybody, uh, but uh, licensed people. So if you have um, the card, you can go buy it. That's that, correct. That's, okay. correct. Can't buy it for anybody else. No, no. Uh, no. Can't that's... send in somebody else to buy it for you. You have to buy it for yourself. Of and, course. And that's, how, yeah. that's how that works. Um, okay, so that's that's what we have here in, in the, the state laws. Um, uh, it, uh, recreational marijuana, just to be clear, is still illegal in, in the state of Hawaii. So that's, no, no, that's we're, we're, we're talking about medical. Okay, we're just talking about medical, medical marijuana. No medical. problem. Okay, I'm, great. I'm, that's great. Well, I won't touch that. <laughs> no, so that that we get into a lot of other issues on on that. So uh, I'm, let's, I'm great talking about medical marijuana. Yeah. So I'm, I'm great. But, see, I have a, a real issue about that. We have people in Washington D.C. doing treason, and they're walking around. And then we got a kid on the street t with one ounce of marijuana, and he's in jail. Right. So I, I right. let's still go. Ahead. Okay, I won't, I won't push that button. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for warning me. Uh, okay. So, uh, so then on the other hand, you have a federal system where bottom line. Let's just say this is this is the fact. Ma marijuana, any tar any type of use, is against federal law. Period. It is a Schedule One, one. drug. Yes. Um, so, uh, and and as long as that is the case, then under federal law, it will be illegal to use. So, here you go. So, for for all of us who are who are right. watching this show, how do you reconcile so, those two yes. things? Okay. So, I'm ready to talk about. That. Okay. <laughs> um, about uh, four years ago, five years ago, then the Department of Justice, uh, under the Obama administration, had had put out a memo. Uh, where essentially what they did is they they said that um, so long as any state, and that's not just Hawaii, but but the other states that have legalized marijuana in, in some form, as long as these states have a uh, a well reticulated system of enforcement and administration over their state laws, then um, what the Department of Justice was going to do is they were saying we're we're going to treat. Um, the enforcement of uh, marijuana laws, our federal marijuana laws, um, as a very low priority. Um, if, however, we get the impression, this is the federal government talking, if, however, the federal government gets the impression that um, the, uh, the states are not regulating their, uh, their industry closely or administering things properly, then the federal government reserved the right to come in at any time and continue to enforce their federal laws. That was under the Obama administration. Um, that memo has never been retracted, but what we have now is uh, we have, as you referred to, <laughs> U.S. Attorney General Sessions, who, who's made a lot of um, statements uh, saying that you know, he, he personally finds uh, the use of marijuana to be, you know, absolutely illegal in, in any form or in any for any reason. Um, but those statements, sitting here right now, have not been followed up with any um, any. Uh, official policies or, or any orders uh, that have come. So, so sitting here right now, we're left with that same memo uh, that existed under the Obama administration as the, you know, what, what we're supposed to take as kind of the default uh, in terms of how the federal government is looking at us. Um, that's, that creates a lot of uncertainty, um, yes. honestly, uh, you know, for not just for Hawaii, but, but for many other states. Uh, you know, like Colorado, Washington, Oregon, uh, you know, even California now. Um, so, so in all of these states, uh, you know, attorneys general, just like me, are really uh, watching the, the federal government closely to see, uh, you know, what, uh, what they're planning to do next. Now, this one, of course, is 1972, but it says Congress grants the attorney general the power to determine whether or not marijuana should be rescheduled to Schedule Two. That's you, the state's attorney ge attorneys mm -hmm. general. And so, you know, the whole thing says that you have the power yeah. to do that. I, I actually think that that means the U.S. attorney general. So no, it, it goes into the states. states. Oh, okay. It goes into the states. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, because it's, yeah. A, you know, it's, it's really, come on. It's, there's, there's other issues bigger than this. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so if you take it from a Schedule One down, then it's not doesn't have the same issues right. in terms of enforcement. Right. So I, I am pretty sure that that for in the state system for marijuana to be uh, moved down a schedule, it would definitely take legislation. So it's not it's not just something that I could just okay. be able to. So to make what that, do we have to do? 
legislation to do that. However, even if the here, I, I think here's the sticking point for, for your viewers is that even if the, the state were to do something like that, um, you still have um, a federal law that, that keeps marijuana at the, at the Schedule One level. Um, and I think everybody out there agrees that it is so unlikely that, um, that Congress or that the federal government uh, will reschedule the drug and, and we're kind of left at the situation that we're at. So um, um, there's another issue here um, because of, of our geography that the couple of uh, dispensaries are here, but you have people all across the state that have a card. How do they transport the, if they come to Oahu and they buy an ounce or two, or however they buy it, how do they go back to Kauai, Maui, what or not? Right. Correct. I, I think there, that's, a, that's a problematic issue that you're identifying. So, and I think that is the reason why when the legislature um, legalized medical marijuana dispensaries, at, at least for this first go around, uh, they, they tried to put uh, you know, so, some on each island in order to prevent that, that problem. The, here, here's what I've always explained to people is this, is that what makes Hawaii uh, very unique is, is that um, the boundaries of the state only extend a, a couple miles offshore. And, and once you go beyond those boundaries, you're not in the state of Hawaii anymore. You're in, in the US, but, but you're not in the state of Hawaii. Um, and, and so technically, what happens is that if somebody gets on a plane, uh, which by the way is regulated by the FAA, so yes. it's regulated by the federal government, but technically, even if they get on the plane um, with marijuana and they are legally allowed to have medical marijuana uh, because they're licensed and they have it, um, once they get a few miles offshore of Oahu, say, to, in order to get to, until they get a few short miles of, from Maui, um, then they're violating federal law because they, they're no longer in the jurisdiction of Hawaii. So that makes us different because um, there, sometimes I've heard people bring up the fact that, oh, Oregon is now allowing people to be able to transport on a plane right. um, their, their marijuana from place to place. The difference between Oregon and Hawaii is that you can fly from Portland to Eugene or to the southeastern part uh, of Oregon without ever leaving Living Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. When you when you fly out of Oahu, you leave Hawaii and and then uh, and then enter back into Hawaii. Okay. So here is this commerce clause. Yes. So tell us about a commerce okay. clause. Okay. The commerce clause is part of the the constitution and and it's basically uh, put in place in in order to uh, to allow there to be uh, you know, generally speaking to to allow there to be a free flow of commerce. Uh, between the states. So here we go back to a long time ago because this is Chief Justice Marshall and he talks about the fact that this Commerce Clause, that this the Fed should not get in the way of transporting the um, marijuana, legal mm -hmm. medical marijuana, and um, it, he says here we are dealing with medically ill patients who will be cultivating marijuana in their own backyard and using it as necessary. Anyway, he says, we shouldn't criminalize those people for mm -hmm. transporting mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this was the Supreme Court. Sure, yes. sure. Well, so, I mean, you, you can have statements like that that are made by, uh, by different uh, judges or justices, but the fact remains is that, you know, as far so as the federal with, government is concerned, even under the Obama administration, right. um, they weren't going to allow this kind of... The transporting. Transport. Right. Um, it, it, but there are, like, you take the Big Island, for instance. You know how long it, would, it takes to drive from Hilo to Kona? Sure. Right, right. So even if there is, I don't know if there is a dispensary there. Right. Uh, right. You know, that... that uh, you know, I, I mean, I think that's a... I mean, so my own sense of what the legislature was trying to accomplish, I'm not a legislator, but, but my own sense was, was that they were trying to take a, a baby step forward. In other words, I think people who were proponents of having medical marijuana dispensaries um, certainly envisioned that there would be more than eight. Um, but, but I think that in order to get the bill passed 
and to have a consensus from the, the legislators. I, I think there were other people who were very concerned about uh, making sure that if we roll this out that we do it properly. Um, and a big reason for making sure that we do it properly is because we have that, um, that Department of Justice memo um, that hangs over us, which, which tells us that we all need to make sure that whatever system we put in place, um, we're putting it in place in a very um, careful and, and uh, well-administered manner. So to me, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a baby step. I think you, know, you bring up a great point that you know, even this baby step isn't helping everybody. Um, but it's a step forward, so it you know it, it moves us, it moves the ball. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, we need to take a break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about what Schedule One means. Okay. 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 Great. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. You may say I'm a But I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will live as one oh, Good afternoon, my name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii we show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hello, and I'm back. I'm Marcia Joyner. And we are visiting today with my darling, darling friend <laughs> and our hero, <laughs> Doug Chen, no. the Attorney General for the state of Hawaii. What is Schedule One? What does that mean? We, we hear a lot about cannabis, medical right. can, uh, cannabis, hemp, all of that on Schedule One. Right. What, what is Schedule One? Right. That's a great question. I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, so basically, um, the yeah, drugs are categorized uh, under the laws I into various schedules. And so all it means is that Schedule 1 is, is the most serious form of illegal drugs. And so right now, under federal law, uh, then uh, marijuana is on that list. So as, as is cocaine, as is uh, heroin, um, it, they're, it's, they're all together. That's... Okay. Right. That's how it is. Okay. <laughs> That's how it is, Marcia. Okay. It's right there. And then, and then what happens is that <laughs> Schedule Two is more like um, it's more like very, very strong, um, you know, legal type of medications, but ones that need to be heavily regulated. Um, so it kind of goes from uh, the the higher number that you go, Schedule One, Schedule Two, Schedule Three. Um, the higher number that you go, then the less regulations are required. Of course, Schedule One has no regulations because it's just boom, it's just illegal. So I'm under federal law. And so that's where that's where it's at. But you know, by, by your reaction, by your response, <laughs> I'm all, I'm already seeing that uh, that you know you're 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 noting what I think many people have observed, and, you know, uh, which is that uh, perhaps marijuana is not something that should be part of that. Nobody's ever schedule. died from an overdose of marijuana. Right, right. But alcohol is legal, and people die from it all the time. Right. The opiate addiction is legal. It's not a Schedule One, and nothing is more horrible right. than that stuff. Right. So, uh, I have a great. Actually, I, I can give you some great background on that. I, I know exactly why that's the case. I, it's you know I, I was I've been in law enforcement. I've been a prosecutor since the mid '90s, and so uh, so one of the things that I, I always remember uh, early on. Um, in fact, I'll go back even further. I think when I was growing up and and in school, you know, learning about you know, illegal drugs and being told that, you know, we shouldn't be using it. Um, I, I think what's, al what's always happened is there, there has been a narrative um, that, that basically described marijuana as a gateway drug. You know, in, in other words, um, so maybe marijuana is not as serious as some of these other drugs, um, but it, it leads, using marijuana leads to using more serious substances. I remember hearing that when I was growing up. And then in law enforcement, um, I, I also remember that being just a, a common theme, a common narrative that would be described. 
Um, I think that narrative is being challenged now, um, but I don't, I don't think it's been overturned. I mean, I think there's a lot of people who still feel you know, very strongly, hey, I, I grew up believing marijuana was a gateway drug, and, and that's, I think that's why we're where we're at. Yeah, and even the name is racist. Oh, goodness. Marijuana is mm, racist. Right. And oh, and that's why you're saying cannabis. Yes. Okay. The, okay. Sta the state right. of Hawaii has yes. changed. Yes, that's to true. medical cannabis. Yes. Right, right, right. You're right. Based yeah. on that was right. you know, a derogatory term. Right. And again, we see people, the jails are full of young people with an ounce of marijuana, and we've got people walking around this very state with rap right. that long because there's no room for them. Right. So what do we do? Right. Yeah. Well, I, th I see we pushed that button because that's, <laughs> that's, that's the one that you feel very strongly about. But, but my point about that is, is that it, what's, it, what I think is you're making a very good observation because I, I think um, that same time when you had that narrative um, that you know, I grew up with and everybody you know, in my generation felt what was the sense of um, you know, drugs being you know, a gateway to something, marijuana or cannabis being a, a gateway to something worse. It, it was at the time when there was a war on drugs, when, when there was a very common um, saying that you know, the way that we uh, address crime in the United States is to get rid of drugs and, and to have very strict penalties for people who use drugs. That's how we're going to stop the scourge of you know, rising crime mm -hmm. rates. Um, whether that's true or not, that's you know that that's just how it was back then, um, and uh, you know and and honestly, I, I think that that's how U.S. Attorney General Sessions feels. I, I've been in meetings with him where that is exactly what he says. He says you know he he first became uh, you know an assistant attorney general in the state of Alabama, um, you know back in the '60s, and he were, you know he remembers there was a war on drugs going on at the time. Um, you know, unfortunately, he then ties in drugs with immigration, and you know, brings in a lot oh, of yes. other, lot, oh, lot of other yes. touchy points for people. Um, you know, that certainly I disagree with, but but he, you know, he brings in a lot of those things. Um, but but I, I'm saying that's where I, maybe the maybe the lesson that we learn from that is that's where like the narrative often ends up dictating um, how criminal justice policies end up the well, way they are, and how we end up with the situation that we have. But even with him. The plant, the the part of it that you use as for industrial hemp, for uh, making things, for uh, treeless paper, Henry mm -hmm. Ford created automobiles out of hemp, and yet it's on that same schedule sure. one. Right, right, right. Nobody's ingesting it. Right. right. So why is it on it? Uh, there is a great reluctance to move it off. It, it yeah. makes no sense. None right. of this makes sense. Right, right. When you think how many trees we cut down to make toilet paper, mm -hmm. when you can use hemp to make paper, why are we, uh, I, I'm just floored. The more I learn about this, the more I am just like, this is, this is all too much. Mm -hmm. Like I said, no one has ever died from an overdose of marijuana. No one has ever died from an overdose of hemp, if whatever that is. Yet people die from the legal <laughs> sitting stuff. in a hemp chair. Yeah. <laughs> no one's ever died from that. Yep. <laughs> right, so or people, using a hemp rope or, right. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And yet right. people, the doctors write prescriptions for stuff that will kill you. Mm -hmm. So how do we move from this kind of nonsense to something that makes sense. Yeah. The state took the step, first step, like you said, in creating medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. Okay, but five hundred dollars an ounce. <laughs> Who can do that? Mm -hmm. And then there's, they say, okay, you have a card. All right, Marsha, here's your card. You can grow ten plants. Where can I grow ten plants? How do I grow 10 plants? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. Where do I go? How do I do it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, back to you. Yes. Uh, how do we move? At, what, do we, what will it take for us, the state of Hawaii, the people, right. ordinary, everyday people? Yeah. How do we move from this crazy nonsense into something that makes right. sense? 
Well, I, I, I love the fact that your, your title of this show is a 10,000 year journey because I think it just shows you that, you know, we're, you, you got to be in it for the long game, you know, in, yes. in terms of really trying to uh, turn around people's perceptions and, and feelings about things um, because uh, some of it might be legitimate, some of it might, might be totally false. Um, I'm, I'm honestly, I got to tell you, I, I'm kind of a proponent for taking those baby steps. Like, like in other words, I, I think it, it becomes problematic if you try to, you know, push too hard to move something through because then it, it creates a great sense of resistance on the, that's just the dynamic that right. I see happen. So to me, um, I, I actually felt like when, um, when the uh, legislature passed, you know, their, their, um, the medical marijuana dispensary law, um, you know, I, I think they were very careful uh, is, to try I, to create a system yeah. that was small, that was manageable, um, and then from there, uh, you know, as, as the state could prove that it was up to the task of being able to administer it properly and, and that nothing dangerous was occurring, then I think the public would be, you know, if that, if that is what happens, then I think there's a better argument to move the ball forward even more. If that doesn't happen, then I, I think that's a good argument to, you know, to really you know, keep a tight rein on it. Um, well, anyway, that's that's how I see it. I, it's not so much keeping a tight rein. Is this how do we go from here where we are today? Oh, it's people like you having these talks. You know, just so that you know you can get and get get people to think about those things because because you know I, I mean I, I really think that so much of you know so much especially for cannabis and people's attitudes towards it and everything it, it really comes down to a, a lot of perceptions i mean I, I just think about my own you know my own uh you know unconscious biases that that i have i mean i've thought about that a lot recently and and just how and how you know with cannabis that that's one of those things you know it's what i grew up as a yeah. kid learning you know gateway drug don't don't <laughs> ever, i mean i didn't smoke it because so, so I, I didn't, <laughs> you know because i thought uh, no way i don't want to you know i don't want to do something worse so so even now when i when i'm talking about this i always i always have this level of discomfort because to me it's just it's not what i you know i'm getting more comfortable but but it's it's well, it's not where but, i'm at but that's what know. we said about this ten thousand year journey yeah. because it's you know i'm learning i knew nothing when we started this show, absolutely right. nothing. And so the whole premise, the whole idea is to invite people like you, our other guests, that have knowledge, that come from a really solid background with some people with medical experiences and whatnot, mm -hmm. so that we can learn, so that we do begin to understand what this is right. and what it can be yeah. and what it's not. Right. And, and you know what I, I will say, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, my, my own sense of it is that I do think that the public um, is more accepting of um, medical marijuana use in, in, in certain instances, you know, certainly for life-threatening diseases or chronic pain or, or something like that. And, and we have a more aging population, so I think more people are aware of that. Um, so there you go. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to spend time with yeah, you. Great. And you will come back as yeah, we move sure. through, this, through this process. I, I'll be here for the next 10,000 years. <laughs> okay, <That's> great. Like, <laughs> yeah, you and I will just be fossils, like, <laughs> talking about, <laughs> about our, our cannabis journey. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you terrible. so much. Thank okay. you. Aloha, and we'll see you next week. Aloha.